Hello, my name is Leroy Blevins. Welcome to Mysteries and Histories. Uh, in this episode here, it's going to be a two-parter uh, video because um, I want to go over to over the both of the gunmen and uh, Grassy Knoll on the JFK assassination. Now, as I point out for years, that people kept on claiming that the uh, assassin on the Grassy Knoll was behind a picket fence. But my 13-year investigation, I have uncovered photographic evidence of the two gunmen that was inside of shelter number three, right behind Mr. Sapruder. Now, everybody still, you know, is still up in the air about certain things when it comes to my discoveries of the two gunmen inside of shelter number three. And like I said, it's understandable because you got to understand, and like I understand, you know, in the past 55 years, you know, everybody claimed that the gunman was here, the gunman was there. They did this ballistic test, they did this ballistic test, and it shows the gunman was over this location, over this location. However, over the years, when they make all these claims and all these false accusations, they always say they had evidence to back it up, but they really don't have nothing to show for it. So when I did my investigation, I decided, well, you know, let's base everything on what we can see because, you know, if you can see it, you know it's taking place. If it, if you can't see it, then we don't know. It's still in the up in the air. And everybody knows that if you try to go into a murder case, okay, a murder case is not built on theories. A murder case is not built on stories. A murder case is built on evidence. So when I start my investigation into this case in 2005, I made a decision on looking for evidence, not for a theory, not for a story, but for, you know, the facts and evidence. And it's took me a long time, but now we can actually, after all these years of stuff, we can piece it together and everything else. So what I'm going to do in this two-parter video here is we're going to view the films and images, and we're going to look over other evidence as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and get started. When I first started going over uh, the two gunmen on the grassy knoll, I started viewing over the Orville Nix film, which I'll pull this frame up here. When I was viewing the Orville Nix film, I was paying attention to the picket fence area. You know, seeing what, you know, if I could see any shots coming from there. Well, I didn't see no shots coming from there. So what I did then is as I'm viewing the film, is I start looking at certain people in certain locations, mark them down on a map and everything else like that. Then when I got up to this location here, when I was watching Mr. Spruder and Mrs. Sessman here, I seen a shot. This is the shot. This is the first shot I seen in the Orville Nix film. This is frame 40 of the Orville Nix film. This is the first shot I found. So what I did was I zoomed in on this location, as you see here on the side, but I'll go ahead and pull up the frame itself right here, the image. I zoomed in to make sure there was a man there and there was actually a shot fired. As you see right here, we can see his forehead, his hairline, shot being fired and the smoke trail. But at the same time, we can also see that he's firing from his left side and not his right side. So I took all this information, written it down. So when I line this shot up, it lines up to Governor Conley. So what I did was, well, we know JFK's fatal headshot occurred before Governor Conley was shot, as we see in the films. So I started backtracking, and here, in this image here, this is frame 26 of the Orville Nix film. So what I did was I zoomed in again. I seen the shot being fired from the window here. And I zoomed in to make sure it was a shot being fired, and you'll see that right here. As you can see, we can see the top of the gunman's head right here. We can see the hairline, we can see his eyes. Uh, we can see the rifle right here. We can see the rifle flash. And we see the sparks coming down from the rifle being fired and we can see the smoke trail coming out. So <clears throat> at that point I was like, okay, well now I knew there was two shots being fired from uh, the Orville Nix film. So I went ahead and lined up these film frames with the Sapruder film and come to find out that the shot being fired here, because I want to know where this shot made contact with after I found it. So I went ahead and I lined it up, and it lines up with frame 313 of the Spruder film. Because you got to remember, when we're watching 
go over the next film we're watching on this side of Elm Street. Watch a Spruder film watching on this side of Elm Street. Okay, so we're getting from the right side and the left side angles. <sighs> so this was the fatal headshot to JFK. Then I went ahead, went forward into frame 40 and line it up with the frames in the uh, Spruder film. <clears throat> Excuse me. And frame 40 lines up with frame 330 of the Spruder film. And also, as we see in the Spruder film, the bullet impact in the back of Governor Connolly's back, which I'll show you right here. Okay. This is frame 313 of the Spruder film. This is where JFK was shot, the fatal headshot of JFK. When we look on the other side where uh, Mr. Nix is, which is B over in this location right here, if you watch my cursor, he's filming from this side. So he's filming the gun and taking this shot to JFK because he's over in this location here. You see these feet here? These are Orville Nix's uh, feet right here because he's filming this way. Then when we go into the next frame, okay, remember he's still on this side filming and the crew just filming this way. This is frame 330, and we can see the bullet impact right here in the back of Governor Connolly's back right here. So after I found this, I was like, okay, well, we know there was two shots being fired from the shelter. Uh, they line up with frame 313 to three, uh, frame 330 of the Spruder film. So we have a location to look at now. So when I started looking over other images, I looked over to a Mary Mormon photo. And as you see right here, when I zoomed in, I was watching, I looked at the black and white first, and then I went ahead and colorized it so I could pull up more details. Seeing that, well, okay, now we have the Orville Nix film showing shots from the, the shelter area. Now we have the Mary Mormon photo that shows both come in there with rifles in their hands. So, because I knew the location because we I found it in Orville Nix film. So, I had to find the Orville Nix film. I knew the shots were being incurred there. So, when I started looking at other films and other images, I knew a location to look at. Behind a picket fence, there is no evidence to prove any gunman behind there. Just a story. But in the evidence, by photographic evidence, the Orville Nix film showing two shots come from the shelter. And this image right here, Mary Moore photo, shows two gunmen in that same location, which the shot was fired from here, which I'll pull this one up. <clears throat> and I'll pull... <clears throat> let's pull the close-ups, okay? We'll pull, in, we'll pull up the close-ups so you can see. Okay. Pull all this up right here. Okay, we'll pull this one, put this one in the center. Pull this one over here. What we're going to do is we're going to do it this way. Okay. Let's go ahead and zoom in on the Mormon photo so we can see both coming, which I'll pull right here. Okay. Now... As you see, this window here with a gunman sticking, with a rifle sticking out, that's this window right here as we see in the World War Nick's film. Rifle sticking out here, shot being fired. Gunman on the side of the shelter. Rifle in his hand right here, coming around. Gunman taking a shot right here on the side of the shelter, same location. This is taken in this location, this is taken in this location here. If you watch my other videos, I, I go into detail on why this gunman was looking out, which I'll uh, go into another video. I'll probably put it in this video as well. But as you see there, we already got the Orville Nix film showing two shots. And then we have the Mormon photo showing both coming with rifles in the hands. I did not stop there because I wanted more evidence. Then when I was viewing over the Bronson film, again, I found two shots come from shelter number three. The third window from the bottom up and on the side of the shelter, which... The Bronson film shows the rifles being fired and smoke trails right along with that. So now I have two films, well actually three films, two films showing where the shots came from, one film showing where the shots made impact with. And then we have a photograph of the two gunmen. So I started looking at more films and stuff like that, and then I came across the Darnell film, which shows the side view of the shelter, as you see right here, side view of the shelter, which we can see both gunmen still in shelter number three, which I'll do a zoom in right here close up and one of the gum is still aiming his rifle from his left side so at this point it's like okay now I got three films or four films I should say total plus you know the image Mary Mormon image so I went ahead and go in further now 
I wanted to make sure that these shots line up and everything else as it showed here. When we look at the Supruder film, we see GFK being pushed off to his left. Now, a lot of people says, no, he was pushed back and then to the left. Yes, he is going back to the left when you take out frames from the film. But if you follow the frames, 312 straight through the 319, you'll see GFK being pushed off to his left. Not back and to the left as a claim. They can make that claim, and they also took frames out to prove their claim, saying they'll show frame 312, 313, and then they'll jump it to straight to frame 319. So they're going to take out three, frame uh, 314, 15, 16, 17, 18, and go straight into 319, so it looked like he went back and then to the left. That's to fit their story. But I don't take nothing out. I keep everything in there. And as you see here in order, when we see the fatal headshot JFK, he's being shot here and he's being pushed off to his left. Not back and to the left, straight to his left. And the reason why he didn't go straight all the way to his left because Mrs. Kennedy's holding up, plus he has a back brace on. Okay, now, after viewing all the films and images and piecing all together, I went ahead and next thing I did was I called a friend in uh, Texas and he took an image for me which is this image right here of the window and as you see when we line this up we can see that a shot from this location will push JFK where? to the left it'll push him to the left as we see in the film this is the view that the assassin had when he took his shot now I put all this together and as you see right here I put all this together now I also come across the testimonies First testimony given by Mr. Abraham Sapruder says the assassin went behind him. He said this on live TV. The assassin was right behind him. And also the Newmans. The Newman says the shots came from directly behind them. Okay, that's where the shots came from. So when we place the eyewitnesses back into their locations, and we see and we lined up what's behind Mr. Sapruder and what's behind the Newmans. Shelter number three. Shelter number three is seen in the films and images of two gunmen in that location, two gunmen taking their shots from that location. So now we have photographic evidence of a location of two gunmen. We have photographic evidence to show where those shots made contact with. And we have eyewitness accounts to back up the location of the two gunmen. And at the same time, which I'll make another video on that eventually about where the lady comes up and cover up Mr. Spruder's ears because there's questions about that. In a Mormon a photo, you can't see it up, but I'm going to go into that in detail into another video. Now, after I found a location, place the gunman in their location, you know, have the gunman in their location, I should say, place them back on the map where they belong. The eyewitnesses back into the map where they belong and the location of where these images was taken and the location of where these people were located at when they took their images, okay, and lined it all up, as you see here, it all fits the stories that's told. And what we're seeing is what actually what people, eyewitnesses are claiming, just like Governor Conley. Governor Conley said he was looking off to his right. And then when he was looking, when he turns over after he heard the shot and he starts turning over to his left, that's when he heard the second shot and he felt the blow on his back and he fell over into his wife's lap. This matches the Spruder film as well, because when we watch the Spruder film, mostly Governor Conley's looking off to his right. It's not until frame 315 is when he starts turning over to his left. This was after the fatal headshot. And then as he was turning over to his left in frame 330, we can see the blow of the bullet impact into Governor Conley's back, and then he falls over into his wife's lap as he claimed. Now, he claimed he only heard two shots, which is understandable as well. Because the first shot happened in this location here, the second shot happened in this location here, which they're by shelter number three, which we did distance on that. So Governor Conley was only 71.70 feet or 22.90 yards away when JFK was shot from the two gunmen inside shelter number three. Then he went further down just a little bit, and then when Governor Conley was shot, okay, which would be shot number six, there was only 91.55 feet or 30.52 yards away from the gunman when that shot was occurred, when that shot took place. So this is how I get my information, just like the time frames. 
uh, based on time frames as we see the impact of the bullet striking JFK, Governor Connolly, or in the surroundings and stuff, and we stop it during that point, that's how we get this thing here. Now, this time frame is, like I always point out, it's based on a Spruder film. Also, the Spruder film, as I point out, he was filming in slow motion. So to be exactly on it, okay, we have to put the Spruder film back into a position which we cannot do because, like I said, the Spruder film was filmed in slow motion because the whole assassination took place within 14-something seconds. But the Spruder film was around 28 seconds long. So you see there's a big difference there. So what we're going to do, so we just can base it on what we can see here into the Spruder film by marking the location and angles. I will go into more in part two, which I is about I'm getting ready to make here. Thank you. Don't forget that like button. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to tell your friends about us. Always in the description down below. You find us out where you can order my book, Evidence of Conspiracy, on the book you ever need, JFK Assassination. And if you'd like to make a donation for a documentary, it's also in the description. Thank you and have a pleasant, pleasant day.